All right, Bitcoin Accumulation Country, thank you very much for joining us tonight for the Lightning Node Roundtable number four. And joining us tonight, we have BTC Socialist. We've got Rick from Crypto Cloaks. We've got Roots All from the Raspy Blitz Project. We have uh, Oliver, who also uh, works on the Raspy Blitz Project for the, uh, so far, the TLS and the Macaroons. And we also have Frankie, who uh, works on the Raspy Blitz Project. Guys, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Hello. Hey there. Hey. Cool. So we're going to uh, we're going to start off with uh, just going through the updates uh, from uh, from each of you. What's been going on recently? Uh, last month we we ended up missing it because uh, we had some some people out representing at, if I'm not mistaken, it was the uh, the CC camp. Uh, yes. And uh, so we didn't end up having a a full roundtable, but Oliver was nice enough to uh, to join us and uh, you know give us like 15, 20 minutes of some behind the scenes action. So that was really cool. But um, anyways, we're, uh, we're fortunate enough to, uh, to have a round table again this month. And so we're going to catch up on the two months of updates. So we'll get started with, uh, with Ben. And uh, Ben, man, what's, uh, what's been going on? Well, I, I mean, I feel like a little bit of an imposter because I've, I've taken a few weeks off, uh, off Bitcoin and, and Lightning stuff uh, because I've been building my house. So and I, I felt really guilty and I, loads of stuff has been happening in the back. So I've been checking Twitter every now and then and thinking, oh, man, I don't do this, I need to do that. In fact, one of my hacks, like I made this, I, I, um, I, I demoed it to, to Christian as well, like weeks, a couple of weeks ago. And it was uh, um, uh, like a, a coin machine, you put coins in and then it gives you like a, a QR code, you scan it and it gives you some Satoshis. And I, I showed it to Christian. I was like, yeah, yeah, I just got to put it in a box, blah, blah, blah. And then like, I just didn't get around to it. And then a week later, this guy made it and uh, 21, 21 is all we need or something, I think on Twitter. Um, and he did a perfect job and it looked awesome. But at the same time, I was like, Arr. <laughs> I wish I'd knocked that out and made it. Um, so I got a couple of hacks which I've been working on for the, the Lightning Conference. Um, uh, but then obviously I haven't really done much for the past couple of weeks, so it's going to be it's going to be a mad a mad month uh, uh, rushing for, for the conference. Uh, one of the ones I've got, which I thought I already put on Twitter, but this is pretty cool. I'll show you this now. So this is just a faucet. So I've got some picture frames, okay. um, and this will fit kind of inside a picture frame with a picture of something. I can't really work out what what I'm going to put in there. I'm calling the project physically faucet. Um, like Madagascar. So I did think about putting King Julian in there, but I thought it might be a bit too goofy. Um, but you like, I'll plug it in and we should, should, it should work. I always say this, but who knows? All right, okay, so we've got light. So it should share, it should say generating gift. I love everything you do. I find it so interesting. <laughs> I just so cheap on wires. I just need to buy like <laughs> more expensive wires, you know, jumper cables. The, the MacGyver, the, the MacGyver yeah, Bitcoiner. Yeah. I give up. Nothing's happening. Oh, look at that fail. I wonder why that's not working. Um, I could, I could check. Oh no. Oh, okay. fail. Oh. oh, I know why. So basically the way this thing works, right. Um, there's obviously something which has happened, I think between the last, uh, uh round table and this one, uh, open node, they've done, K they've gone all KYC, um, which was to be expected, but I was just kind of gutted it happened anyway. Cause now, if you sign up to open node, you um you have to like scan your passport in, um uh, and it just it just sucks. Um, uh, whereas before you could just join with just an email, uh, and it was a great service for for people like developing lightning stuff because you wouldn't have to like run a node. You just have an idea for something you just wanted to make. You just make it quickly, um, and get it out there. Um, but now you have to do the KYC stuff. So what I've done is I've like this project. I'm running it off. So I've got Zap running on my desktop, and it's just a normal desktop. Um, uh, zap. It's not like a, a full node uh, desktop zap. Um, and then that then has um, a public uh, URL which you can connect to. And then I serve it like my macaroon. So now I've turned zap on. This should totally work. Um, I hope. Here we go. There we are generating GIFT. And then it should. Have we got a QR code yet? Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All fingers and thumbs. Oh, there we go. Got Look something. I got, yeah, I got a QR code. Could be able to see a QR code there. Now that's using um, LN Gifts. It's using their API service, but that uses this um, standard uh, called LN URL, uh, which um, the Blue Wallet, uh, the Blue Lightning Wallet on Android has, and also Blue Wallet has as well. Um, and I think Breeze is going to get it soon as well. 
Uh, so it, basically, it's like a way of encoding data into um, uh, like a, into a kind of a lightning transaction, like you are. Um, I need to look into it a little bit more. So if I open my lightning wallet thing here, if I scan my QR code, where are we? Sorry if this is taking a while. There we go. And then it'll say, do I want to like accept this gift or do I want to pay this? I click on that. And then hopefully in the top there, my balance, I think it's already gone up and yeah, my balance goes up. Um, so I just got like a hundred Satoshis out of this faucet. And then this faucet will then generate another um, QR code, which you can scan and it'll just get, give you another hundred Satoshis. So the idea is that in the conference, I'll have like five or six of these picture frames and people can just go up to them. Uh, uh, they can download like blue wallet or the, 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 the blue, um, the Bitcoin lightning wallet on Android, scan the QR code and then get some Satoshis. It's like an easy uh, physical faucet for people to be able to receive Satoshis. So um, not the best demo I've ever done, but you know, you kind of get the idea it worked. <laughs> uh, and this is that's basically the the the, the same um, uh, principle. All I've done is I've added a coin mechanism, and then you, you can put coins in, and you can specify the amount you want as a gift, which you can then scan with the wallet, and then and then and then redeem the gift. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. So although I haven't done any hacking, I've got some stuff sort of bubbling in the background, um, uh, and I'm uh, super psyched for Lightning Conference, um, um, which is coming fast around the corner. Very cool. When um, when we're done with the uh, the updates, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up on uh, some questions about that M5 stack that I finally got that I started playing with. Yeah, congrats, um, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I love it. It's I'm inspired by you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's yeah. great. It's awesome. Um, okay, so here we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to uh, to crypto cloaks. Rick, man, how you doing? Doing good. I think I missed the last lightning one. I think I missed like two. Yeah, good that's to be back. So. I don't, I don't even know what the, what it all did, but I actually, I got a, I got a short list. So that open source raspy blit case, I found some problems with it. If you started running the shin fan on that case where one of the pegs was too long to go into it. So I'm modifying that again. So that way you can actually get the whole case to clip together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to redesign a little bit of the inside edge. So that way it actually is more of a snap fit right now. It, it kind of snaps together but it easily falls apart. And I think what people actually want with this thing is to actually hold together for a while. So I'm gonna redesign the lip. I don't know if anybody out there, I know it's open source and anybody can take and modify. I don't know if they've done that yet. So if you guys have, please reply to any of these podcasts or hit me up on Twitter. So that way I can see what you guys have done with it because I'm curious on if anybody's changed this yet. So that's for the open sourced Raspy Blitz case. Uh, other updates since what two months ago? Uh, we just launched Build a Node. I've been working with Lightning in a Box, and I'm pretty excited about that. We've launched the Build a Node platform where we can help people that don't want to build their own Raspy Blitz or BTC Pay server. It was kind of it was kind of bound to happen. We build these awesome shells, and we figured why not allow people to just buy all the hardware too, and we'll have a full node and send it out. So that way they can get the whole Raspy Blitz running and everything right off the bat with Lightning and the full Bitcoin node. So we're really excited about that. I don't know if I can share my screen. If this will work. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to try to find. Nope. That's Zoom. Uh-oh. Is it working? I think that's Zoom. Uh, boom. We should be good, right? Did it come up? So yeah, so we did build a node and it's just a pretty basic web page. You guys can come to here, you, you can choose your uh, your uh, Raspberry Pi 4, how many gigs of memory you want. There's two to four, you have your storage choice of uh, hard, one terabyte hard drive SSD. A lot of people are doing the SSDs that we, we're noticing and why not? Uh, you can choose an LCD screen. A lot of people are starting to choose LCD screens on the BTC Pay server build a nodes, which is pretty cool. So Lightning in a Box is actually having uh, deposit addresses show up on that LCD screen for the BTC pay server. So you can use that as your little mini hub. And he's working on coding other things to use for that screen for BTC pay server. So pretty excited about that. And then here you just choose your software and then your shell colors where you can customize your entire shell. And then one thing I updated because everybody asked for it, I did an accent color and then I also allowed it to do your shell color. So that way they get a better idea of customizing. I know that was a big deal going on where people were like, well, what's the accent color? So that should make it easier for everybody. Oh God, where do I go back to Zoom? And 
Oh, am I done? Am I done sharing? We're back. Oh yeah, we're back. Okay, perfect. Uh, other than build a node, uh, I'm going to the lightning conference, bringing crypto cloaks with, I'm really excited for that. Uh, I got that whole scholarship thing. So I got my ticket, yes. got my lightning conference ticket. I'm going hundred percent. Really excited for that. Really excited to meet everybody, show off what we do. I believe I might have a little corner in the hacker booth to show people what we're all about and what we're bringing to Lightning and what we're bringing to the Bitcoin uh, space. Really excited for that. So if you guys have any questions, I guess, for me of, or requests that you want me to bring to the conference, items or other things, just let me know there. And then other than that, just random projects I'm working on. I don't, I don't get to do all this cool coding stuff like BTC Socialist because I'm not a coder. But randomly built... I'm working with the Trezor hard wallet company and we're building this taco mount. Yes. Everybody's wondering why the heck we're even doing this or what's the point. It's just for fun. It's, it's a fun little item that you can have and it's the shape of a taco. Hold your Trezor. So pretty excited about that. So we're working on something for that. How can you not like a taco mount? Why not? Uh, other than that, uh, I got nothing else. Very cool, man. So, so the the taco mount though is is that not really for the uh, the taco plebes? Uh, it absolutely is. That's that's one hundred one hundred percent built for them. Seriously, There's no other reason why we'd make this is because people like tacos, and why not hold your treasure tea in a taco mount? So. That is fantastic. I, I may have to go get one of those from you. That is very uh, cool. Just just random fun. Every now and then you got to make fun stuff, and that's one of those items. So. You gonna bring a 3D printer with you to the uh, the conference? So just got done talking with BTC Socialist. He might bring one for me to use to show off what when we're printing items. And then I'm also possibly working with a 3D printing group from Roots. He's in contact that I'm gonna tr start talking to too. So hopefully we will have a printer and at the Berlin conference printing off some of our products just to show you kind of how the whole printing process works. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to uh, Oliver, Oliver man. So last time we spoke, you were at uh, the CC camp, and uh, you, you shared some awesome pictures. And um, so, how's it been since then? Yeah, <clears throat> hi, good to be back. Uh, yeah, it, it's been quite busy after the CC camp, but um, yeah, not not too much. Been working on lightning stuff. Uh, uh, apart from a small uh, visualization, uh, I'm working on to show how uh, HDLCs kind of look like uh, while a payment is going through the Lightning Network. Um, but I'm still a little very much at the beginning. Uh, it's it's already on my GitHub, but uh, yeah, there's not that much to see yet. But uh, I think this could be interesting for uh, people to see what, what actually happens, how the channel commitment transactions look during the, uh, the, the payment. So it, it will be very technical, but hopefully very, um, yeah, much information to, uh, to learn from. And uh, yeah, it's also been quite busy uh, because there's a, a little change coming up. I'm going to, going to start a new job tomorrow. And I, I think I'm now officially uh, allowed to talk about it. Um, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, starting from tomorrow, I'm going to work for Lightning Labs. Uh, Whoa. I applied. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I applied for one of their positions and hey. yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they uh, asked me to join the team and I'm going to do so tomorrow. So um, as soon as I'm back from Riga, uh, it's going to be my first day. Uh, in the office or yeah, I'm gonna work from home of course, but yeah, it's, it's very, very awesome. So you're a man uh, on the inside. You know, you know, you know Wootsville's <laughs> gonna be hitting you with all the uh, Raspberry Blitz. Uh, yeah, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> gonna help wherever I can, yes. Um, yeah, so not much else that is new. Uh, the Rico was, uh, the Balticonic Batcher Conference was a blast, really so much high quality content two days of information, information. Uh, yeah, my head is kind of uh, <laughs> bloated at the moment, um, but it's, it's just awesome. And meeting all these uh, people uh, that, yeah, only heard or seen before and now met in person it was great, yeah. That is absolutely fantastic. 
very yeah. very cool man <laughs> very cool yeah yeah so any uh, any no any notable appearances from uh, from anybody at uh, at riga uh, well, everybody was there almost, <laughs> or it felt that way. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's hard to say that so many uh, big names, and uh, if any, you make uh, it next year, just you have to. <laughs> any uh, any notable talks or anything like specific talks that you uh, that, that like really uh, stuck with you or that uh, really interested you? I mean, well, I'm sure they're all interesting, but you know, like maybe something yeah. that kind of hit home. Um, well, because it was especially relevant for um, what I'm going to be working on, uh, it was uh, Alex Oswald's talk about Hyperloop. Um, uh, and I guess I'm even going to work on that, probably. And um, he's talking about how using uh, the, the loop service in the future uh, with uh, batching and music, that sending an on-chain transaction could be even cheaper um, by using their service uh, instead of doing an on-chain on transaction yourself. So, uh, yeah, very interesting, uh, quite technical, but uh, yeah, I can really recommend that one. That, that is awesome. Very, yeah. very cool. <laughs> really cool. Well, I hope somebody recorded it and that they posted up on YouTube uh, or something. The whole YouTube, uh, the whole uh, stream is on YouTube. So both days, all the talks are online. So... Oh, cool. If you've got two days to spare, just uh, watch the <laughs> All right, I got to go find them. I'll, I'll post them in the, uh, in the show notes for this. Yes, please. That'd in be case great. people are interested. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. That, that's awesome. So again, congratulations on the, uh, on the new job. That's very Thank cool. You. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> that, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it really is insane. Uh, but I'm cool. so happy and so looking forward to it. Yes. Well, it's well-deserved, man. You're, you're working on stuff that very, <laughs> well, very few thanks. people understand. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> cool. All right. So uh, here we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to uh, to Rutzel, and uh, and Rutzel is kind of the uh, I'd say like the the, the head of the uh, the Raspi Blitz project, or at least that's that, that that's how I feel. Um, but uh, so uh, what what's been going on, man? One dot three is finally out. I saw that, which is amazing. Yeah. And I've done the install a few times on an RPI four, and I love it. So uh, what's uh, what's going on? I feel like there's still big things coming. Uh, yeah, release of uh, Raspi Blitz 1.3 was definitely the, the biggest news in the last kind of weeks or the le 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 last two months or something. Um, yeah, so finally it's, it's the, 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 the 1.3, the final release, not a release candidate, it's the final release for the Raspberry Pi 4. So everybody who's now upgrading to a better hardware, uh, setting up with, with up-to-date hardware, can use also the Raspi Blitz. But it's also the same software was also working backwards compatibly with a Raspberry Pi uh, 3. So if you have a 3 still running, a Raspi Blitz, you can also use the same uh, Raspi Blitz version 1.3 to, up, uh, to upgrade. So And upgrade is really highly recommended. I don't know if everybody heard, there is uh, for older L&D versions, there is a bug was found, so your funds can be at risk. So it's, it's a good idea to update anyway. So every L&D version that's uh, below, one, uh, below 0 0.7 uh, is vulnerable to a, to a bug. So you should, should update. And the Raspberry Blitz 1.3 comes with the latest L&D. So you're safe if you're then on the 1.3 Raspberry Blitz. So just for everybody to know. So it's a good, good, good time to update if you have an old Raspberry Blitz version running. So, so this, this makes fun. But you get a lot of extra. So um, the new Raspberry Blitz 1.3 is running on the new uh, Raspbian uh, Buster. So it's a new operating, a brand new fresh operating system. Um, under under the hood, so uh, it even gives up gives some performance speed ups even for older Raspberry Pis, um, and of course with the Raspberry Pi four now we go into a territory of hardware that's very very attractive to for, to really self validate and self sync the blockchain just with your device if you use the Raspberry Pi four with at least two gigabyte RAM version and an SSD uh, to, to get the, really the speed up uh, so, so that you really can use the speed up of the USB 3. So in this combination, um, you now can really go into self-validation territory. That's really good news. I think a lot of people wanted that and we, we can get rid and rid more and more of the torrent download thing was what was always just a workaround to get going. So yeah, I think this, this, is, this is the one, one good thing, uh, or the, the greatest interesting thing on the new release, I think. 
and um, and I also saw that uh, there was um, as well. There's a piece for that that you can install so that you can use the touch screen as well. Uh, yeah, I think Frankie can tell a little bit more about that because he helped oh, okay. a lot on, on get that running. But yes, the touch screen finally is uh, we can now be because it was always uh, uh, the LCD that you have on your Raspberry Blitz was always touch capable, but we never used uh, we never utilized this this feature. So Frankie can tell you a little bit more about that. But it's part of the 1.3 release. Um, and beside this, also we had a great uh, new new logo now. So a new logo design. We had this this logo competition. Uh, the one 1.3 now comes with the with the with the with the with the, with the new logo, but it also contains every other logo that was submitted during the contest on the, as a startup screen. So the project itself has one logo it uses now, the uh, the one with the little berry, the network berry. Um, but the, the, on the startup screen, you get all by by random, you get all the kind of uh, all the all the all the submissions we have. What was really great look, so I really like them. Um, yeah, just to give, give a, small, a quick overview of what, what else is going. Now with the 1.3, you can, from the beginning, you can set up with um, the Raspberry Pi behind, or the Raspberry Blitz behind Tor. So this is a good, good feature for everybody to, to really start fresh, so you never kind of connect your node ID to your public IP if you really start from the beginning with, with Tor. Um, even now, if you switch on Tor afterwards, it recommends to you or gives you the option to really make a clean L&D account. So, so if you, for, for example, just the scenario, you already, uh, you, you have fresh, you set up fresh with your public IP. Uh, now, your, now your node ID is connected to the public IP. Even if I now switch behind Tor, somebody has this record already of your identity tied to your IP. So you maybe, when you switch to Tor, you also want to, Create a, a fresh new, um, a fresh new node ID. So you can do this now if you want in in one in one step supported by the recipe blitz. If you if you turn on Tor support, so it's just just uh, one little thing. And also already I, I wave around this little thing a lot. So uh, thank you, thank you, Ben, uh, BTC socialist, for 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 all hooking us hooking us up with those uh, M5 uh, stack. <laughs> Um, and why, well, why I'm mentioning it is because now they're at Room 77, that's the, our Berlin meetup, where, where we, uh, it was also the first store that accepted Bitcoin for beer. Uh, so it's a very historic place. And we now use one of those uh, devices that is now connected to a recipe blitz that is in a secure location to you, so you can pay with Lightning there with with with, with this with uh, such a little little terminal over here. And the the basic idea is you don't want to have the recipe blitz in your store uh, because this is a very unsecure environment. People are coming in and out. It's a kind of public place. You don't want to have your node running and maybe in that mm -hmm. environment. And this device is just to read a macaroon and, uh, and the invoice macaroon on there. So even if somebody steals now this device, what is about 70 bucks, you can buy it in, 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 in Germany. Um, so if somebody steals this, your funds are still safe. So somebody can just create new invoices or uh, has, has to read macaroon and maybe read what's going on on your note. That's still suboptimal. So I hope Oliver, um, maybe we can get a, 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 a tightly fitted macaroon just for such a, a point of sale devices that just can just read the invoices that it's created that would be great oh. uh, on somebody else so we really have to tie it, still tie a little bit of security down it could be better but it's already the point that we wanted so, so that you don't uh, use lose your lose your funds when somebody steals this device uh, at, at the bar so already yeah, it great. was it was super cool as well because like I, I saw a podcast with Jorg and um, uh, so thanks Christian for hooking it all up like me and Christian kind of liaised on it and I sent him the, the, the M5 stack it was funny as well because I sent him in the post and it took for some reason took as long as it takes so I sent one from um, uh, you know from Wales to Germany and then at the same time Christian ordered one from China and then they arrived on the exact same day about two months later didn't they or something ridiculous um, uh, so they took forever to get there but then um, yeah then Christian installed it in room 77 and you're on a podcast he said that and it's a really good point I didn't even, didn't even realize he said it's the first uh, uh, decentralized you know uh, was well, the first point of sale system you, you can use um, specifically built as a point of sale terminal for you know for accepting payments which doesn't uh, rely on a trusted third party um, and I thought I was flipping ace like I was, I was I was so I was so proud to have, have you know made 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 it you know um, I hadn't even realized that as well. I just sort of made it um, um, for, for, for a purpose. And I hadn't even realized, you know, that it, it ticked that box as well. So that was pretty cool. 
Um, I can't wait to buy a beer when I go to the Lightning Conference on it. It's going to be great. And there's a whole bunch of issues as well I'm going to look at on, on GitHub, which people have raised. Because uh, I know Christian's had some, um, you've had some uh, brainstorming with some of the guys down in Room 77 and come up with good, some good ideas. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. Very cool. Yeah, so, um, and this is kind of, of course, you can also do something more fancy with an iPad and BTC Pay server, of, of course. That's another way to do uh, Lightning payments at your location. But this is kind of to give a very cheap uh, way to start uh, to, to connect it just to the recipe blitz. So you have a very sleek and minimal minimal setup. So, so. Uh, so this is a great news and the start off of something very they think that will this is, this thing will get legs in, in in some kind of way so so we have to see oh i take can, um, can i add one more yeah. thing sorry christian to cut you off again uh the coolest thing for me as well was like um you know i i'm, I'm really stoked when i see like bitcoiners like start playing around with microcontrollers um uh, and then people you know using some of the tutorials to make their own projects um but what was really cool was m5 stack the people who make that uh, they were kind of, you know, paying attention on Twitter. They were liking posts. They were like, they liked your posts from the video from when you were uh, in room 77, when you made the first payment. Um, and then we started talking to them on Twitter and we were like, yeah, yeah we, what we want is like, cause you can replace the button thing. We were like, it'd be nice if you could have like a specific point of sale uh, button oh. face, which you could stick on there with like a, an NFC tag thing, which you could, you know, in the future we could use NFC tap. We could use our phones to tap and, 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 and you know, transfer the, the, the invoice over. Um, and they were listening and they were, they were, they were, you know, they were responding to it. And I, you know, I think they're thinking about it. So that was really cool to see the, the manufacturers, these microcontrollers actually thinking, yeah, this Bitcoin community, there's, there's, you know, there's money to be made. So we're going to, we're going to develop stuff for them. Yeah. And then we really have to see where this can go. So it can have legs in multiple ways. So we have to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, um, and I just want to let you know because we had a lot of people here on the on, on the hangout, and I want to use this opportunity. Um, so, uh, Oliver, I want to I want to ask you did a workshop with the recipe blitz. What is uh, what is the uh, the t the takeaway the the feedback like from from it? Can, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, Gabriel organized everything. I was just there uh, assisting him and the uh, participants. But um, in the end, we set up uh, like six uh, new Raspberry Blitzes. So Raspberry Pi is four um, with four gigabyte uh, of RAM and um, one terabyte SSDs. And uh, from the software side, it all worked great. Really, it was uh, the last time I did it was uh, in 0 0.98, and there we had some issues. But uh, now, uh, as far as I can tell uh, on the software side, everything went really, really smoothly. Um, what was kind of an issue was that uh, Gabriel couldn't order um, the the USB 3 cases for the SSDs uh, in bulk. So he, uh, he, he was delivered uh, like a replacement part for a very cheap part. And on USB 3, uh, it just it corrupted the file system. So yeah. in the end, we had to use USB. Oh, no, first we had to figure out what the problem was because it was it just that the system hang on on accessing the disk and so then uh, someone had the idea let's switch it to usb2 and then it just worked so this very cheap uh, um, case uh, yeah had a bug in the, the usb stack and uh, so we lost a couple of minutes there but all in all um yeah that they're still setting it up at home uh, through tor and i guess that the feedback is awesome work really it was uh it, it just worked so Really uh, cool. <laughs> Thanks good, a lot. Good, good to hear. And this is a good reminder. The with the 1.3, there are new shopping lists because of the Raspberry Pi uh, 4. So there are now two packages. The one is kind of a minimal package, which is which is kind of the old packaging for the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, and also for maybe the Raspberry Pi 4 with one gigabyte. But the new standard is the Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigabytes because this is the kinds of of, of of best match between price and performance, and it also gives you a little bit space to do a little bit more later on with the recipe blitz and also the especially on the usb on, on the ssd casings um yeah we there are there were some that had some error in some i think usaf or something some uh, some some usb uh protocol UAS. that 
UAS. Yeah, I have to look it up again, but it was yeah, one, 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 one protocol for, for communicating with the mm -hmm. SATA standard over USB, I think, and there not every case was supporting this. So if you have one of those not supporting cases, you can run into kind of in a freezing situation. So the ones that are on the shopping list are tested and have good feedback so far. So nobody report problems with them so far. So those look good. So um, yeah, so if you do shopping, upgrade shopping, I highly recommend going with the uh, with, with, with the shopping list, with the stuff you see on the shopping list now on the new ones. Very cool. <laughs> I have the expansion board, you know, for the four. That's the, ah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I ended up getting. And a USB fan. Yeah, the cooling is the cooling is, is a little bit uh, still, still discussing. So we found this little shim fan that fits between yeah, that's that's the right that's the right, right version number over there. <laughs> yep, uh, oh, okay. thirty nine degrees. That's that's not uh, bad. that sounds good. <laughs> not bad. No, no, you can, if you don't have good cooling, if you don't have good cooling, it really gets hot and the, the processor gets slow. So it's really good cooling is a is a is, a, is an important topic. So the shim fan is working. So at least as as for now, but also I can see that for some people in their setups, they maybe try want to experiment with other kind of casings or coolings. And but then you have to think how how can I get the LCD still on there because normally all the cooling stuff takes pins on the GPIOs and this yep. is where the LCD needs to go. So so there is a little bit of conflict and the shim fan just fits in between. So um, it's at least it's, I think it's the best option at the moment, but people are experimenting. We have to see what other options are the kind of best to go maybe in the future. And maybe there are some different setups. So there's maybe still some room to go for, for, for all, all features on setup. So where you can really say, I want a very big SSD. I want uh, um, some extra cooling, I want an extra case or something, but we have to figure that out. But this is mm -hmm. maybe something for the future. So, but, but the shim fan, I think, is at the moment the best kind of compromise uh, for, for a standard package right now. Yeah, I agree. Did, um, did, did you add that expansion board to the, uh, to the shopping list for the No, uh, not, the, no? Okay. no not now. So the, the the setup is like the picture you see on the website. Uh, there's there's a new oh, picture, okay. and it's really like this uh, just this this, this this very simple case uh, um, at the moment that you can uh, buy at the same place where you can buy the shim fan, and you can also buy a recipe pie there if if it's available. So it's it's a kind of um, more more simplified uh, because I, I still like the form factor of also with with just kind of the having the SSD case as a base, yes. and then you put on top the the, the the Raspberry Pi with the LCD, I think it's still good, and it also fits with the uh, with, with the with the fan with the open source fan CryptoCloaks is doing. So I think this is kind of still the the the, the, the good standard setup. But then going for a kind of maximum package, there uh, this this could be something where you can think about an extension board, um, also better power power supply or something, some stuff like that. So so this is this is a place where where we can go more kind of into a bigger form factor then. Cool, very very cool. Any uh, any more updates before we move on and start bugging Frankie about his uh, his LC his uh, touch screen? Uh, yeah, maybe, but we can also make this for the closing round, just just that we don't forget because now because yes. with the lightning conference coming up in October, I'm now collecting the uh, all the ideas for the for the hack area of the conference because I'm in, in management of the the kind of hack space and the hack tables over there. So uh, I'm collecting now all the projects that are coming so that I can get a better overview and see what, what you guys need, uh, what, what, we, what we need to arrange or how much space do you need? Do you need a Wi-Fi? Uh, wi do you need a LAN cable or something? So just let me know when you, if, if you're coming and what you're bringing or what, what, I, what idea you have to bring and we can, we can talk about that. So, so I'm collecting, uh, collecting this all now so that we have a good time in, in Berlin. So just, just let me know. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. You guys are going to have an awesome time. I applied for that scholarship, but or whatever it was there that, uh, and I, I didn't get it. But uh, it's okay. We got Crypto Cloaks representing. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, cool. Next time. Um, okay, so moving on to uh, to Frankie. Uh, it's been a while since uh, since we've spoken, man. I hope you're uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, I noticed in one dot three that uh, the the uh, your uh, your baby is in there. The uh, the touch screen. If uh, if you want to. Give everybody some updates about how that was and then what's going on with that. 
Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me again. I think it's I also skipped two uh, sessions. I was in there in the first one, and now I'm back again. Yeah, thanks for yeah. having me. Um, yeah, I think for me it was also a slow summer. It was really hot here in Germany, so I didn't get around to do a lot of um, yeah tinkering or coding uh, during that time. I guess if it gets darker and colder, that might uh, yeah. I think I'll have more time um, working on 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 my project. Um, but yeah, I have a few things on my list. Just the first thing, I also ordered a Raspberry Pi, not a Raspberry Pi, um, a Raspberry Pi 4 um, uh, some weeks ago, but I only got to uh, setting it up on Friday. <laughs> so I inst installed 1.3 and uh, got a full sync running. I'm at 95% syncing the blockchain in less than two days. I think it's really great <laughs> with this performance, uh, running on an SSD with the new Pi and four gigabytes of RAM, that's, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, that's the, the first thing on my list. The second thing I'm working on, which, which is not making so much progress, but I think it will in the future, is my little Blitz D, we call it at the moment. It's kind of the, the like an info, um, a background service that will replace some of the shell scripts that uh, Rootsall is has on the Raspberry Blitz, which, which is kind of the idea to have a backend API where you can just um, call some some of the data that's shown on, on the screen. So you could also maybe show it somewhere else, maybe in an app on a website and also on the screen. So this is a project that's on my GitHub. It's called BlitzD. It's kind of also for me a, a learning curve for getting into Golang, which is a great language. <laughs> so I'm kind of learning and then developing and yeah, maybe it will get into, I don't think it will get in 1.4 Raspberry Blitz, but maybe in 1.5 or 2.0 or whatever, I don't know, but something for the future. Hey Frankie, could you uh, could you put a link to that in the uh, in the group chat so I could put it in the show notes? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, uh, also, uh, being very very hot uh, was uh, CC Camp or the Case Communication <laughs> Camp that we went to. Uh, Oliver, I think, did a little background uh, session from from there, and I, I think he also showed a talk about the uh, beer tap, which was a really awesome thing to see and to try and to test and uh, get some beers from. <laughs> um, so, should we talk about it, or was it already covered? I'm not I'm not quite sure. Oh no! Well, um, I mean, we talked about it really quick with uh, with Oliver a couple of weeks ago. But uh, you can definitely go over it, man. I thought it was super cool. He gave me like as many pictures as he was allowed to give me, and uh, and I mean it was I man, you know, it just looked awesome. Like the uh, the beat, like the vending machine, the beer tap, like the uh, it's it's just so cool. Even the tents, man. It honestly looked like a rave. It was really a blast. Uh, great, it was so cool. Great, great, great uh, event and so on. Uh, unfortunately, it's only every four years, so uh, sometime till the next one. <laughs> but yeah, the beer tap uh, was a really great experience. I, I think they sold a couple of hundred beers on Lightning with the beer tap. Uh, and yeah, I, really, I enjoyed it. Maybe Oliver, maybe we want to talk about it later again. But um, yeah, basically what we also uh, uh, did a little bit uh, on at CC Camp is that we talked about the, the GUI, the touch screen. You just mentioned it um, and Roots are, uh, enabled the uh, touch screen in the menu. So on the Raspberry Blitz 1.3, you can go to services and then you can uh, enable the touch screen, which is currently experimental. I'm, we're kind of looking for getting to bugs, fixing, getting ideas on how to use it and so on. At the moment, it only really does one thing. <laughs> it gives you a touch button so you can cleanly shut down the Raspberry Blitz. So because it will stop the lightning will stop the Bitcoin D and will do a shutdown so that you you don't have to open a, a, an app or your PC and SSH into the Raspberry Blitz. If you want to turn it down, you can just press the button and then it will shut down. One thing that we worked on at SSH Camp was kind of, we came up with the idea that we might have uh, do a kind of, um, not really a point of sale, but being able to generate an invoice on demand, maybe for uh, donations, for example. So we worked on this uh, so that we included uh, also a donation button where you hit a button and then you get an invoice created on demand with a pay what you want amount and then you just uh, yeah, get, the, get a barcode on the, on the screen and you can scan and you can pay. This is uh, not in the 1.3 release, but the code is there. I think there's an open pull request where it's still work in progress so that you could actually, yeah, uh, have some, the, the most basic, I think, most important interaction with the device would be A, connect to it, and B, more importantly, get me, give me an invoice so I can pay something. That's something um, I think we, uh, yeah, can, can work on getting new ideas. If you have any ideas, maybe open an issue we can discuss and uh, things that we can integrate into the, into the touch capability of the Raspberry Blitz. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, 
Lightning uh, conference. I will also be at Lightning conference. I think I'll be hanging around at the hack table. Not sure where that will be, <laughs> but oh. yeah. Um, so yeah, we're looking <laughs> forward to that too. Gonna get to meet everybody there. <laughs> Gotta get out to Europe. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, thank you so much. That that is absolutely amazing. And uh, like I said, if uh, if you can give me the link to the GitHub, that would be awesome. So we could uh, we could put it in the show notes. So um, I mean, at this point, it's uh, it's really uh, it's really just uh, you know some uh, some basic uh, going back and forth on on all the uh, the different things that uh, that we just talked about um, before the uh, before the show. I was uh, I was talking about uh, the M five stack with uh, with BTC Socialist and. Um, yeah, he uh, he shared his uh, his project, uh, BTC Socialist. I, I don't remember if you mentioned that that project on this uh, on 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 this actual uh, roundtable. Well, the M five stack sats. The the yeah. um, the point is oh, no, I did. I demoed it the last time. The last roundtable. Okay. It was on. It was okay, cool. on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And there's some no, other it's... projects coming out as well, which you can do with that. So uh, there's a hardware wallet project you'll be able to make with your M five stack as well, which is really sweet. Which is uh, Stefan's one of Stefan's projects, which I'm gonna steal and do a tutorial for. Uh, so there'll be a whole bunch. Of, hopefully, there'll be a whole bunch of other Bitcoin centric stuff you can do with your M five stack. Very cool. So you're and saying I should buy one then, because there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. Got it. Yeah, buy one. <laughs> Okay. Okay. actually is is anybody uh using because uh, it's a different type of um is anybody doing anything with arduinos yet because i've got like three I mean, unos so, yeah i mean so the arduino is just not very powerful so i mean the m5 stack is is based on the sp32 and that's kind of like the um ras raspberry pi of, of, of uh, microcontrollers um there's just gazillions of them um but one of the benefits as well of using something like that as well is you, you don't have the uh What's it called? The um, when you have an attack, like in the production line, what's that called? What, you know, the, the, if, if the postman knows yeah. he's delivering a trezor to you, then it's yeah. a supply chain attack. A supply chain. Yeah. Attack. And you don't have the supply chain attacks. There's just so many of them, and the, 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 they come in all shapes and sizes. You have the, you know, the just a basic microcontroller, and then you've got like the development kit, and then you've got them packaged into nice things like what you've got. Um, I've got another M5. This is the M5 stick, which could will turn into a very nice little hardware wallet. Um, we got the M5 stack, which is the SP32 based. Uh, uh, they're great. They're great. Um, uh, but I mean, I just wouldn't bother playing with the Arduino. You know, it's, I mean, these are like, you know, $5. Just buy, buy some of these instead. So they're we should more, just stick with these. Yeah, they're much more powerful. I mean, you can still play with the Arduino, you know, but I mean, I, I would personally, I would, I, I, I'd prefer these are cheaper. Um, uh, there's more of them out there. And I think there's probably more support out there now for them. Um, there's so many people cool. making projects with them and good, pro interesting projects too. Um, and, and you know they're powerful enough now to be able to do uh, HTTPS requests, so they can talk to your your node and do a whole bunch of interesting things. So your your imagination is the only thing stopping you from making cool stuff, really. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I actually uh, so this week uh, we saw a vulnerability come out, which uh, I believe I don't I think Rootsall mentioned it, uh, but there was a vulnerability that came out in older versions of LND, so everybody had to uh, had to upgrade. And uh, so if you had an older, uh, like if you had an older Raspi Blitz, you know, anything before 1.3, you, uh, you know, you pretty much had to upgrade it. So I had to go through and upgrade six of my nodes. And um, I have to say, I, I was pretty worried about doing this process because I had never done it before. And it actually went way smoother than I thought. So very cool. Thank nice. you guys. <laughs> six nodes. Nice. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Only... I... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say hats off because the upgrading the Raspberry Blitz project is super easy and you, you guys couldn't have made it really any easier than that. And it goes super smooth. I did it too to, to a mine and nice work. It's super easy and nothing went wrong. So I can't complain. I mean, it's, it's good to hear because a lot of people complained about the update a bit because people, why is there no auto update? So I just want to have a click there and then, then I want to have it updated. But I, I deliberately choose the, you know, kept it the, the way that you just have to get, make a new SD image onto the SD card. You just download the new version, put it on the SD card, just put it back in and start it up. And then it should just do ev everything kind like it was. So, so, so in doing the update, um, 
but having an auto update would have introduced a single point of failure again. So, so at one point you had just everybody's just getting it from the GitHub or automatically or from my server or something. And this is really something we don't want we want to have. So at the moment, yes, the image is, is you, you download it also, but you do it manually. You do it after maybe you heard from a friend that it's okay and mm -hmm. you're doing it. And even if you don't like it, somebody else can distribute and say, no, no, take this image. This is better. You trust me. I'm your good friend. Maybe you go go desperate or my code is better than roots also so so this is so this is more the it, it's more open for to everybody to to if the, if the project gets forked or if, if, if uh, so so if i i don't want to have a wrench attack somebody saying here put this update to every breast blitz out there <laughs> no <laughs> i can't I, I cannot do this so I, i'm not able to do this and, and i'm sleeping better better with it so 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 it's so it's good to it's good to hear that you all had even going through having taken out the SD card, making a new image, putting it back in again, that this is, this is still an easy process for you to, 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 to do. So it's good to hear. So um, when, I, when I went to go first do it, because I'm, I'm pretty terrible at reading instructions. Like I'll sit there, I'll look through like maybe one, one or two steps. And because I'm, because I'm technical, I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I'll figure this out. So I go and I make the new image. And what I did was I used the existing card. And in one of the steps, it said to use a new card. And I was like, oh no, you know, cause obviously I, I don't know what I did and I probably should have read the steps before I did that, but it didn't okay. matter. It totally now, didn't uh, matter. <laughs> here comes the point. This is, uh, you can do it more securely with two cards. So because yeah. the idea is if you, if you, if you, um, if you use the update option in the, in the main menu. So there is a like check for new update. And if there's a new update, it tells you, it kind of guides you through the process. And during this process, it does an up, it does a backup to the SD card. So, so if you, if you knew, uh, use the new SD card, you have your old one. And even if anything goes wrong, you have, you still would have a backup on the other SD card. So I'm not exactly sure if this adds more complexity. Uh, maybe it's easier just to tell, just shut down, exchange the SD card. Uh, make a new image, put it back back in, back into it again, but but yeah, having this extra SD card maybe irritates a bit. I'm not exactly sure about that. So I yeah. skipped that step also. So <laughs> I just installed a new one and put it in. Same SD card. So. But but okay. So but hold on. So so roots all. I did both processes, right? I did the one where I go from the node and I follow the steps. And then I did the one where I followed nothing and just like went and burnt a new, you know, an image. And I have to be honest, I don't find that other one uh, difficult or annoying. I, I think if anything, that's part of the user experience that you could go into the node and have the node guide you through the update. So I, I don't think it's the worst idea because you're, you're creating a scenario where the person has fault tolerance, even though we know that all the real important data is stored on that hard drive it doesn't matter. It still, it still creates that aspect that the person can go back to what they had. Yeah. You know? Okay. So I like it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let me know if stuff gets too annoying or, or, or too distracting. Like, no, no, don't forget about the second SD card. Just talk about this one SD card. It makes, it makes it more easier for people because having just two SD card was a kind of safe play for the beginning. But maybe really it, it irritates because then you get into this moment, oh, I don't have a second SD card. And then you think, um, yeah, and then you maybe don't do the update because you're afraid it wouldn't work with a, uh, without a second one or something. So something maybe to, to consider. Maybe I will just get, get the second SD card out and just help the people in the process mm -hmm. and make it a little bit more slicker on, on that side. So I have to think about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I, I mean, still, it's still a great process. And I also wanted to add as well, um, one thing I liked is the, uh, the backup. Because uh, I was using a Windows machine and like one thing, and again, it could very well be because I just don't know and I, I didn't find it. But I, I've always wanted to be able to just simply make a backup of everything that's important, right? On that hard drive to me. I've been wanting to be able to make a backup that I could store locally on my Windows machine. And I understand that that's not all fault tolerant and the browser and you know, and everybody's getting hacked and everything disappears. But like, I, I just, I, I liked the aspect that you had that as part of the process that I could actually back that up. Like all I had to do was paste, you know, the, the command in and it backs up locally to my machine. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I, I, 
I think so. When you do a backup or an update, you want to make this extra step or at least maybe just take the second and just make an extra copy. And I think this combined was with, uh, so you don't need to do the second SD card thing. If you do the backup, if you want to make it, make it carefully, do the backup thing. If you're more like a reckless update person, just 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 use this one SD card and and, and uh, update it uh, without any backup. So should should also work. Should also not put anything in danger. But uh, backup is always a good way to go. Oh, absolutely. Before you do anything, always back up. And I, I definitely know the. Uh, I, I know I know what it's like not to do it because I've done it and I still have that two percent of a Bitcoin that's just floating out there that I for some reason can't get back. Uh, Anyways, you know what? We had uh, somebody, uh, um, Suheb joined us from uh, Ride the Lightning. Suheb, are you with us? Yes. Can you, can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Hey, yeah. thank you so much for joining. Sure, no problem. Thanks, and sorry for being a little late. No, um, not at all. Yeah, so update-wise, uh, uh, we just uh, released uh, last evening uh, US hours. Uh, version 0 0.5.0 of RTL. Um, now it is integrated with C-Lightning. If uh, any of you or any of your listeners uh, are interested in C-Lightning or running a C-Lightning node, then they can use RTL to uh, you know manage the node operations. Uh, that was a it was uh, almost a three months uh, of effort, development effort uh, on our part uh, to get to the point where we, we can actually run the UI with C-Lightning. Uh, while uh, and one of the reasons, as I've previously stated also uh, on your forum, is the lack of uh, you know readily available REST APIs, obviously Lightning. Uh, so you know the first step for us was to write the APIs, uh, and then you know integrate the UI with those APIs, uh, so that you know the UI can talk to C Lightning. Uh, the interesting thing which came out of it was that now we have published, along with the UI integration, a separate REST API layer. Uh, and so that REST API layer uh, can actually be used by other developers also, you know, if you're writing web apps uh, with C-Lightning. Uh, so, uh, so basically, you have the RTL integrated, and then you have an independent REST API layer, uh, which other developers can use for, um, you know, integrating with uh, their web apps. Um, so that's one update. Uh, interesting thing, actually, and, you know, being on this uh, forum also kind of helped because we um, used uh, uh, created our authentication layer for uh, for the REST APIs using macroons, uh, and you know I actually reached out to uh, Ali, uh, you know when I was kind of struggling through it and trying to figure out how to integrate macroons. Uh, so now uh, you know the REST API layer creates a macroon, and actually Ali you know responded and helped me a lot. Uh, you know we actually went through your code, Ali. To understand how to actually, you know, <laughs> wire the authentication up. So thanks a lot for that for support. Uh, cool. And, <laughs> Glad to help. <laughs> yeah, and and it'll be great if you can. I, I'll actually send you uh, those snippets of code that we are using. So it'll be great if you can review it and see if there's anything that we can tighten up there. You know, anything that we can make better. So I'll be, you know, more than happy to get your feedback on that as well. Sure. So, yeah, I'm happy to have a look at it. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, it's a pretty simple thing that we implemented, actually not too complicated. Uh, but, uh, you know, if there's anything that we can do better there, definitely your insight can help. Um, so what it does is basically, uh, you know, when you initiate the API server, uh, it generates uh, uh, access token called access.macroon uh, and generates a root key. Uh, access.macroon is a file which can be, you know, uh, sent to or kept on a, on a computer which is running RTL or any other uh, application which wants to access the APIs. Uh, so it's a bearer token, basically. Uh, and uh, that bearer token has to be converted to base64 and passed on uh, to the APIs uh, in the request header. Uh, and you can access the APIs. So that's a simple authentication we implemented. Uh, implemented HTTPS, OpenSSL-based HTTPS connection also. Uh, so these are some of the things that we implemented. and. Uh, now, but it's still in alpha. Uh, we are keeping the C lightning piece in alpha. You know, uh, we want people to test, and you know, if there are any obvious bugs or anything like that, um, we are looking forward to feedback uh, to improve both the APIs as well as the UI. That is awesome. Yeah. As soon as I saw your uh, your tweet last night, I uh, I had to uh, include uh, Billy Garrison because I know he uh, he only he works around uh, C lightning, so. 
I figured, uh, hey, there you go, man. He uh, he might be interested in that. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think the sea lighting uh, a lot. Sea lighting enthusiasts are there in Germany. I, I think uh, a lot of people in Germany are like running sea lightning nodes. So it might be actually of interest for people, for people there, uh, you know, to if they want a UI solution, basically. Oh, cool. Very, yeah. very cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so we were just actually at the uh, at the point where uh, we had gone through everybody's updates. So you came just in time and we were just at the, uh, you know, the the point of, uh, you know, just having some, some basic chat, you know, and some basic back and forth about, uh, you know, about what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thanks. Cool. Um, actually, uh, there was there was one thing that uh, that came up this week, and uh, actually, I, I don't know. I, anyways, I don't know if anybody else would know the answer to this, but I, I, OpenNOMS gave me the answer to it. Uh, essentially, people, somebody was asking whether um, if you're running behind, if you're running behind Tor, okay, that your node is not discoverable, and um, so I, I think that people don't understand that there's two types of Tor, right? There's, there's the, there's Tor, which is based on the actual, uh, which works on the, you know, the TCP IP layer. And then there's Tor that actually relates to our, um, uh, our, our addresses, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so supposedly uh, the, the Tor, if you have a node that has Tor enabled, Supposedly, you're completely discoverable, but for some reason, people think that you're not. I don't know if anybody knows if the, if that's true or not. Um, OpenOM said that that was fake news. He said that you're absolutely discoverable. I believe it because I have had my nodes running on Tor the whole it's ever since I could, and I don't have a problem, and I'm able to see them on one ML. So, has anybody else found that they are not discoverable or something like that? Well what do you mean by not discoverable? You mean uh, showing up on one ML? I, you know what, to be honest, I, I guess so. Like making it possible so that other people could find your nodes and, you know, make a connection to it, you know, open a channel with you, I guess. Well, uh, the thing I, is I wasn't given a much better, I didn't have a much better description either. Uh, okay. You know, so I'm giving you what I believe that the, the person was, was saying, you know, was referring to like either you're um, not, being able to be discoverable on one ML, or I guess you know somebody can't actually find your node to create a channel to it. As as long as you don't open any channel um, that is non-private, uh, your node doesn't really get announced into the network. So as long as you're just starting your node and doing the the gossip part and not opening any channels that are publicly routed and publicly known, uh, there is no reason for other nodes to be aware of your, uh, of your pub key or your public key. So your node doesn't show up uh, in, in any uh, of these network browsers, but that has nothing to do with Tor directly. It's just harder um, for, uh, to link to your identity. But um, as far as I know, even if you just start your clear net uh, node and don't open any channels, you, you don't uh, show up. That's why even uh, the Alan Big node can't open any channels to you unless you open one to somewhere first and then you get announced. And so oh, that okay. in combination with Tor led to people to believe that it's, it's non-discoverable. But if you're behind Tor and just uh, opening private channels, you will never be known to the network because there is no reason for the network to find you, basically. So, so yeah. stupid question, okay? If I just open a channel, let's say to Rick, right, from Crypto Cloak, okay? I've never opened a channel to anybody else, like 1ML or something like that. Do you know if I would be discoverable on the network or not? It depends on if the channel that you open is marked as private or not. Okay. Uh, and this flag that you set How? yourself when opening the channel, uh, if you, you can, I think you can only do it really in command line because yeah, most okay. apps have a default. <laughs> uh, and I don't even know what the default is in, in, in the apps, but uh, if you do it through command line and say private, that means that basically the only thing it means is this channel does not need to be announced on the network. And 
if it does not uh, uh, announce uh, in the network, then your node is not connected and therefore just pruned away or not even communicated. Yeah, pretty because sure you RTL don't have an option, right? Yeah, I, uh, yes, RTL has the option when you're opening the channel. Uh, it has a flag called private. Yeah. So if you click that, the channel will be private. And we have that both in LND and C Lightning now. I uh, never... just, just wanted to add one thing. Uh, you know, if the, the advantage of even if you are connecting to a public node, right? Or if you open up, if you are running behind Tor and you've opened a channel with a node which is public. Uh, the advantage that you still have is that your IP address is not visible, right? Uh, so you'll not be traced by your IP address. So that's one obfuscation that you still can have, even though you are running, uh, uh, you know, behind Tor, and you're opening a public channel. Oh yeah, wow! So running running Tor is a very 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 good idea on the Lightning Network, but uh, as was mentioned before, you need after you go to Tor you need to create a new wallet because your public key, which is this, this long number that starts with a zero, a two or zero three, this is linked to your wallet and not to uh, the, any installation or IP address. So if you just enable Tor and then think, yeah, nobody can find me now, there has been a record with your public IP address before. So um, if you want to go Tor, shut down the node, may, uh, do a backup, close all channels or whatever, and start from fresh on Tor. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree. Thank you so much, by the way, for, uh, for explaining that, uh, both you and Suheb. I, I really appreciate You're welcome. that. That, that's that's awesome because I, I, a lot of people get really confused. Even I, I, I had a hard time answering that question because I'm like, well, like, you know, I, I just, I, I really wasn't sure. And Suheb, thank you for pointing out that you can actively choose to make a channel private or not because I didn't realize in RTL that I could just check that advanced options button and choose that myself. So very cool, man. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, do you guys have, uh, does anybody have anything else? No? All right. Well, look. Um, I, I don't know if uh, you guys want to just uh, go around and do some uh, some final thoughts, uh, some quick final thoughts. We can uh, we could start with uh, could start with uh, BTC Ben. Yeah, just uh, an apology. I haven't done any Bitcoining for it's, it must have been like three weeks really, maybe just the occasional Twitter hit, and that's about it. Um, but I'm um, psyched now. This is a good. This is a good today. This evening is in fact when I'm starting to Bitcoin again, and I'm going to be doing it for the next two or three weeks. So this is a really good way to kick that off. Um, and I can't wait to get my hands dirty with some of the projects which we're making. Um, uh, but I've taken to, like, if I have a dumb question and I just don't know the answer to it and I've, I've struggled to find an answer to it on the internet, I just, I have no, like, you know, I'm full of humility. I have no pride. I just go onto Twitter now and I just blast Twitter with my dumb questions. And then it yeah. seems to be working. People come back with some pretty good, pretty good answers. So, yeah, so probably going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks if anyone wants to help me on some of my projects. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, I you, uh, ben, I saw your comment on uh, enabling routing hints, right? I don't know whether you got an answer to that. I still haven't got an answer, man. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, uh, you know, if I can help answer that. But I still, I couldn't get the chance to get to it because I was just consumed by sea lightning. But I look yeah. at it, uh, you know, maybe I think there is a better way to do it. Uh, you know, figuring out routing hints and enabling that in your... Uh, routing requests or payment requests, uh, but I should be able to find an answer for that. Oh, nice! That'd be good. Yeah, that'd be. Really... I even had like roast beefy uh, Lalu like answered my my initial tweet, uh, okay. but I didn't get back to it quick enough because I was busy moving rocks at the house build. So, um, yes. uh, and then when I finally got back to it, he'd obviously moved on to something else because I was gutted I didn't have his attention. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 some fiddly weird. It's like an array. You have to put an array of like public keys in of of the of the, um, yeah. of, of the nodes, I guess. But I just don't know how it's structured. Like, I just need an example. Ollie, now you work for LND. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just need an example. Yeah. Of, you know what? Of, of, of root hints, like how you get that array, uh, uh, how you're supposed to structure it, you know? I see that example. Like, it's, it's um, using me. It should be as easy as just going into the, this uh, LNCLI part where the, the, the parsing of the command line is done. 
and then it fills it into this structure that is then sent over the network. So maybe that helps, uh, but I can have a look at it uh, tomorrow. I don't have my laptop with me, yeah, but uh, I can have a look at it and uh, send you an example. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing it as a curl request. I'm, I'm just doing it as a request from my, from my Arduino thing. So it's, um, uh, it's not so much like typing into command line, I suppose. I suppose, but just like an example of the of the JSON, like how I should arrange the JSON. The oh, right, request right, okay, to yeah. The REST yeah. API. Um, okay. Uh, if the, if there's one of those out there, I mean, like the 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 documentation for the REST API is adequate. It's just I, I'm an idiot, so I need actual physical examples I can look at. You know, um, uh, so just just for that array, you know, I'd be, I'd be amazing. I try my best. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Ollie. You're going to be so busy now. <laughs> You're going to regret <laughs> taking that job. <laughs> yep. No, no, definitely not. Uh, well, being busy, yes, but regretting uh, no, to take it, no, no that's that's definitely awesome. not. <laughs> Congrats, man. Congrats. Thanks. Well, I was going to say, actually, uh, the next person who was uh, up for the final thoughts was uh, Oliver. So, uh, Oliver, man, any, uh, any final thoughts while we're wrapping up? Uh, yeah, it's just, um, well, we're talking about... Uh, um, the Raspberry Blitz, uh, there was also a cool project that uh, I had uh, some hands on this weekend, uh, which is the, the sh um, node, the full node from Shift Crypto, uh, the Bitbox base. Oh, yeah. Um, Staticus uh, was also at the corner and he brought to the first uh, model. Oh, and wow, it looks is so it glass? Slim. Is it glass with the metal bits? He was t what's it like? Um, uh, yeah, I, he said at the moment it's 3D printed and very expensive, um, but they might do this uh, mold, um, plastic mold thing in the end. But it is, uh, it's a hard plastic. It's completely black. No, uh, it's a small, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Um, because the print at the moment costs $150 because it's a very special print. I think it's probably a resin print because uh, ah. it's got very, very fine parts. Uh, um, it looks so slick. And uh, he, he also showed me the inside, of course. It's a, a, a Rock Pro and with an SSD. And yeah, it, but it's going to be very expensive. So it won't be a direct competition to the Raspberry Blitz uh, because I, I love to do it yourself project, but it's going to be the high end with quality and design awesome. um, oh, version. And it's, it's going to be very powerful. So uh, it's got a lot of processing power, a lot of RAM, a lot of disk space, obviously, because it's got a, a whole M2 slot for an SSD. So you can upgrade it to, I don't know, two terabytes, four terabytes if you get the money. Oh, oh yeah, God. that was so cool to see. Uh, it's a real high-end hardware that doesn't look like a hobby project anymore. I mean, even the Casa, it, it's it's professional, but it still looks a bit. It still like, looks like a hobby project. Yes, yes, yeah. and that one will be like the, the pro version, and that got me excited. Nice. Yeah. You may have to get one of these. <laughs> yeah, you I know? don't know when they want to deliver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Will will be a good add on to your collection, right? <laughs> nice. Um, no, that's it from me. Uh, I'm very tired. So uh, cool. Much <laughs> else to say now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Oliver. Man, you're such a true. You're you, you were the uh, only one that you were the only one at CCC camp that that made it, and now you're you know <laughs> now you're staying up. So really appreciate it, man. No, I enjoy the roundtables really. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations again. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to move on to uh, to Suheb. Um, even though I know you just uh, you just joined and you gave us your update. Do you have any uh, do you have any final thoughts while we're closing out? No, no problem. So so I'll just briefly talk about what we are going to do next. Uh, so the next thing that uh, and also that I'm pretty excited about is that we are going to um, revamp the UI, right? So we are going to redesign the UI. Uh, we'll soon launch a product, project uh, publicly um, where we'll share our uh, UI designs, UI thoughts that we have. Um, and I'm working quite closely with um, uh, Sergio, uh, Diogo Sergio. Um, so, you know, uh, he runs the and, and, uh, London Bit Devs, I believe. Um, and um, he's a UX expert who's leading the UX redesign. Um, so looking to make it much more uh, 
professional quote unquote uh, you know uh, both for um, all types of implementation that we are on uh, so that's something that is going to get started now after um, i see like which was a big lift uh, given all the engineering effort that we have to put in it so and, and thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot ali for uh, the hints on uh macro integration that was also a great help uh, you know on that part for see that thing yeah that's that's the update for now very cool man thank you so much and thank you again for joining us this week no problem thanks all right we're going to uh, we're going to move on to uh um frankie do you have any uh, do you have any updates or uh, any final thoughts before uh, we close out yeah, sure. Uh, one short remark. Ben, you just mentioned the ESP um, uh, com controllers being able to do HTTPS uh, requests, which I think is a, a nice thing. And what I have in mind for the split C thing, I posted the link in the chat here, is that I also have a, a API backend where I could kind of, um, yeah, have a backend for some features of the Raspberry Blitz, which you could really call from an ESP32, right? So you could have some interaction with the Raspberry Blitz called from a ESP32 whatever device over the API. That's something I have in the back of my mind. Do you yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that's, that's mostly what I've been fiddling around with. Um, okay. It'd be really nice to get like a ride the lightning uh, uh, kind of fork where you have like a little screen uh, with the same GUI and use, you know, like in, maybe bigger mm -hmm. than this, maybe similar size to a, 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 a Raspberry Pi Blitz, um, uh, where you do uh, just do API requests and then display information and then have some interaction with your with your node without having to physically expose your node. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, that's just, but that's kind of an outlook for the future. And then another thing that's on, on in my mind, it's like an open question or request for feedback is uh, now that we have a little bit of spare memory on the Raspberry Pi 4, on a Raspberry Pi 4, um, it might be an idea to think about including BTC Pay server on the Raspberry Pi. Yes. Not sure what the general opinion yes. is. Yes. <laughs> I see some nodding heads. So, uh, uh, so I think that's something we need to talk about. Yes. Yeah, that's all from me. <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome, though. But thank you very much. And yes, we definitely uh, definitely want would like to have BTC Pay as uh, as part of the. Uh, as, as part of the slick, you know, easy rollout that, that has become the Raspi Blitz. So that would be cool. Um, and speaking of, speaking of that, uh, Rutsal, do you have any, uh, any final thoughts while we're closing out the, uh, the show? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, right to get back to this topic. Yes, now with the Raspberry Pi 4, we have this little bit extra RAM and processing power we, we, can, we can utilize. And I think there are the, people were asking about, I think, three things or at least two things. And I would like to, to add a, a, a third. One is the BTC Pay server. And there's already a pull request uh, or not a pull request, but an issue people are working on, on stuff. So uh, we'll take a look for, uh, on that for maybe the next release. There are also for a long time, people, especially MZ, were looking into running Electrum on the Raspberry Blitz. So there are some things, this is an easy, easy, easy thing to go so that you can use your Raspberry Blitz like a trusted Electrum server uh, for your setup. So, and then what would be very nice and, util, uh, and, and have good utility for something like a Room 77 uh, setup would have to, to use the loop services from, from the Raspberry Blitz. So we have to see how we can integrate them here because think of a merchant, you want to set up in, in, in incoming capacity in the beginning, you manage this, but this runs full at one point uh, because you now got all this, this money. So that would be great to have an automatically a script or whatever that at one point sees, oh, are you, you're, you're full or you're getting close to full so now you know, there's a loop out service um, that then can just 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 freeze up the capacity and at the same mm -hmm. time puts your puts your funds into a hardware wallet somewhere that you had saved a treasure address or something uh, oh, that you have wow. so, so, so remember, you, your wallet, your Raspberry Blitz is still a hot wallet. And for merchant scenario, where you say, okay, maybe I need to handle 500 euros uh, a day or something, um, and you build up the inbound capacity for this. But once this is full, so at the end of a day or end of a week or something, or it automatically checks, okay, it takes your hot funds and then automatically transfer it in, into your kind of re, very kind of um, hardware wallet where you have a bad, much better security for long time storage your funds. So, so I think this would, would be some services next to BTC Pay server, next to Electrum server, kind of this loop out services 
those are, would be wonderful if we can can manage them also directly from the recipe blitz like like so so things just like kind of the next things now we can look to not sure if everything will be in the 1.4 but at least um, those are the hot topics i think for for adding application uh, now to the recipe blitz Cool. Well, as you know, we definitely look forward to the, you, you know how it goes, right? In software development, it's like you, you release the one version and, and it's, you're already, you're, you're already working on the next one. Like it's, it's brutal, you know? So I know, I know. thank you so much. Thank um, you so but, much. but talking uh, about a little bit more relaxed stuff, what is up next for me personally, I will be next week, I will be in Mallorca. Uh, so there is a Mallorca Palma Bitcoin meetup on the Wednesday uh, next week. So this is the, the 18th uh, of September. So if anybody in the Spain, Mallorca, Palma area wants to join, I will be there giving a little bit intro into Lightning for the local community, it's a little bit talking about recipe blitz. So is anybody, if anybody is there, uh, I will be happy to see you there and have a beer or something. So in, in a relaxing, sunny setup, that would be nice. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, we're going to move on to the uh, final thoughts from uh, Crypto Cloaks. If, uh, if you've got anything to, uh, to share with us before we close out. Yeah, uh, super excited for Lightning Conference. I don't know how much I can say that. Just going to Berlin is going to be awesome. I think for the past six months, listening to you guys having all these cool things out in Berlin, saying I want to get out there and if I finally can, it's going to be awesome. Uh, like I said earlier, if anybody has anything they want me to bring, items or ideas or anything else, just get a hold of me, cryptocloaks at gmail.com or on Twitter. That way I know what you guys are looking for. Um, also regarding resin printers, we're getting one. We just ordered a form three. It should be here in December. So we can start doing some high definition prototypes and other cool stuff. Really excited for that because the micron layers, it's like 0.25 micron is what one layer is. So it almost looks injection molded. And I'm guessing that's exactly what, uh, Staticus was using. So that should be pretty sweet. Looking forward to that. Uh, other than that, no, uh, just build a node. If you guys are looking for nodes, check that out. Lightning in a box is really coming in strong on that one. I'll shill a little bit. Why not? Uh, it's Raspi Blitz, PTC Pay servers, and it sounds like maybe in 1.4 we can have it all together in one, which would be awesome. Just saying. So that's all I got. Very cool. Very cool. So look, I just want to thank all of you once again for joining us. This is our uh, this is our fourth Lightning Node roundtable, and uh, I thank everybody for your time, and I look forward to the next one. So everybody take care. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye. Bye guys. Bye.